G'day, Great Clips. Yes, that's right, I'm Australian. I do live here, but I am Australian. For the record, the Geico Gecko is not. <laughs> now, I just had to do one thing, because there's been so much talk about this chair today. I just had to do this to get us started. Do you realise how many years it's been since I've had the need to sit in one of these chairs? <laughs> 35 years, actually, since the last haircut I had to have. I thought it was terrific. I mean, we were hoping for a speaker that would come in that would be engaging, that would be positive, offer some humor, some terrific stories based on experience, and he did all of that. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not here because I'm an expert on hair, but I have got some pretty cool business stories to share with you today, and that's what I'm going to do for the next couple of hours. I'm also going to put you to work. I know you guys have come to have a business conversation for two or three days here. Let me just make it a little bit more personal for a minute because this is the stuff that was really important to the real direction of our businesses over the last two decades. And this is important because this is why we go to work. This is why we do what we do. This is why we create companies, create careers, create lives, because we want to go and enjoy that moment with the people we really care about. Now, I was really bad at this. This business piece here, it's about making a few bucks. I was okay at that. But this whole life piece that was about me, and those I cared about, I was awful. And it wasn't until I actually stopped and thought about it that I realised that was the case. With personal vision, you create purpose. Once you create purpose, you have an understanding of where you're going and a greater clarity of how you're going to get there. Without personal vision, you can't possibly create vision for the businesses that you lead. Right now, I want you to think about what you want out of your business. Whether you own the business or work for somebody else, it's irrelevant. What do you want out of the companies that you work in? What do you want them to do for you? This is a significant shift in small business. Because if we understand this, now we've got a renewed passion for what the business can do for us. You've found your purpose. This now gives you greater passion because it's working for you. You've got it doing its job. I love the energy. Yeah. yeah, great energy and very intuitive and kind of a deep thinker, which is, it's nice, it's refreshing. And we grow, we invest in growth. We grow, we invest in growth. We grow, we invest in... That's pretty much the cycle we have in business. We go round and round looking for an opportunity to grow the business to the next level to improve our cash flow. But what about the metric of the industry? Things that are happening right now, consolidation, private equity, things that are going on that are making a difference. Change of a CEO with your competitor you heard this morning. That's the stuff we've also got to focus on because it influences not just our business, but our lives. And here's why. Because that stuff also influences the economy. We've got boom, bust, recovery, boom, bust, recovery. That's the economic cycle we all have to deal with day in, day out. And it will have the same cycle. Everyone's sitting around saying, 2008's done. Thank you, I finally got out of that hole and I'm feeling pretty good, life is fantastic. Guess what? It is coming around again. He just hit a very raw point in me. So back to my opening comment, your emotions drive the success or the failure of your business. Here's what that looks like. I love this business, I hate this business. I love my staff, I hate my staff. I love my wife, I love my wife. <laughs> your emotional engagement in the salon has a direct effect on those you lead. Your emotional engagement at home has a direct effect on those you love. It's really simple. Now with this life plan in place, it started to give me a platform. I could now start tracking this convergence of the emotional cycles I was going through, the industry cycles, the economic cycles, and of course our business cycles to understand what influence I was having on the outcome we were seeking in our businesses. So I thought, okay, got it, understand it, worked out how that affects my business, but who do I need to influence to actually achieve some of these goals? And the simplicity of that was the peers around us, particularly in a multi-outlet environment like this, where you've got three or 400 people you can lean on to help you with some of the issues that you're dealing with. The second group was those we serve, our customers, our guests that come in every single day of the week. And the third group was those we led. So I'm going to go through this for you in the next 20 minutes and give you our view of this world because in order for us to achieve some of those personal goals and that personal vision and achieve the business vision, we had to find a way 
to better influence those around us to give us that edge. Let's start with our peers. I've been working in franchising for 30 years. 30 years, 300 different brands, 16 different countries, been a franchisee twice, a franchise all once, and just invested in a franchise business here in the United States only a few weeks back. I get this industry. I speak at 50 of these a year. I love this industry. I've been in it for so long. But the thing that frustrates me the most is that we don't open up and share. It's not just about your staff. It's not just about the people you work with, your colleagues. It's about the 7,000 people that are in this room that's gonna make a difference to your life in the next couple of days. Because here's the deal. The smart guys aren't on stage. Give me a step off for a minute. <laughs> They're never on stage. The smart guys sit beside you. I gotta tell you, Troy ranks at the top. He just made a connection with the group that was so instantaneous. So let's talk about the next piece that's probably most interesting to you, and that's understanding how we're gonna influence those we serve, the clients we have and the clients we'd like to have. Now we work on three basic words here when we talk about serving people. How can we be more distinctive, more emotive, and more collaborative? Now, I just wanna preface this by saying this is not a sales conversation, nor is it a marketing conversation. This is a positioning conversation. And consider this in amongst all the things that are happening in your business right now. Been there, done that. You know, he's, uh, he's lived it, he's walked the walk. Let me give you a couple of brief examples of, of how we apply these three things in relation to how we position our businesses in the minds of those we serve. The clients we have and the clients we'd like to have, but don't yet have. For us, if we're gonna be distinctive, we have to anticipate their needs and not just exceed them. 10 years ago, you used to be able to say, uh, we exceed our customers' expectations and that's our point of difference. And that was probably okay until everybody started saying it. And then it lost its equity, it lost its value because all of a sudden, well, everyone's exceeding my expectations now, so they tell me, so what makes you so special? And the answer was not a lot. So we decided we had to step it up one and anticipate the needs of those we served and give them that before they even felt they needed it. Because you see, I expect you're gonna exceed my expectation. It's just what I expect of people these days. If you wanna be competitive, give me something to think about. Give me something to be excited about. That's just how we think. I mean, I came up here 50 minutes ago and I know that probably 90% of you were sitting there in the audience going, Come on, ball guy, impress me. The unique thing about Troy is that he truly took the time to understand our business. He took his family into the salons. Uh, he had his girls get haircuts. Obviously, he doesn't need the haircut. Uh, and then he talked about elements of our business, comfort, freedom, connection. He clearly did his homework, which made it easier for people to have that dialogue with each other. Let's talk about leadership for a moment. Because that's a struggle for all of us trying to lead a business, trying to engage and retain and motivate great staff and, and have them really help us drive our businesses forward. And I thought, well, we're missing a piece here because we're communicating with our customers, we're in their language, we're giving them the right promises, but they haven't got that energy, we haven't got that, that real fire that I want. I want these guys to live and breathe the business. I want an emotional connection with them and my companies, and then that can't help but then translate to an emotional connection with our, with our customers, because they'll feel the energy. Now, I, I struggled with this for so many years. I'm just like you, I've read all the books, I've been to the events, I've listened to the tapes. I've done all the stuff I should have done as a leader to try and be better at what I do. But the interesting thing is I've learned more about leadership as a father than I have in the 12 companies we've owned over the last 25 years. I'm very fortunate, I'm 53 years of age and we've got two beautiful daughters. Bailey is a five-year-old. And uh, Charlize is our three-year-old. Now these two little ones have given me more leadership skills in the last five years than anything I've learnt in my entire business career. So I want to share some things that have come from this that, that you might be able to remind yourself of back in your business, because many of you have got children and many of you have raised some wonderful children over the years. But let me just talk about this for a little while. I've learned there are four basic things that these guys have taught me over the last couple of years. Four things that I've got to focus on as a great leader. I have to have that vision. But more importantly, I have to articulate that vision. I've got to be able to show those I lead where we are going. Now, just like our children, we ask them to do stuff. Bailey, go find your shoes. Charlie, pick up your toys. And they go, why? Because that's what kids do. Kids ask the question, why? 
Do you know why they ask why? It's because we don't tell them why we're asking them to do it. And we do exactly the same thing in business. We bark instructions, do this, walk this, talk this, say this, be this, hit that number, hit that target, be that budget, be the, be the, be the guy that comes first, get that client. But we don't explain how that attaches itself to the vision. So if I said, Bailey, go get your shoes, she'd go, why? If I said, go get your shoes, we're going to the park for the afternoon to play on the playground, she'd go, okay, Dad, and she's off. That's exactly the same in your environment. We need to remind ourselves that we can't lead with sound bites. We need to lead with vision. It really connected for me on a personal level on the things that I need to change. So back 15 years ago, I thought, well, I gotta put all these things together. Now my challenge is to try and find some rhythm in a day to make that happen because everything happens with routine. If you wanna go and get fit, you gotta go training three times a week. You wanna get brain fit, you gotta find 30 minutes a day to be better at what you do just to create a better business strategy, create a better you. Same thing when you're trying to put these new philosophies in place. Because the challenge you've got when you walk out of here in a couple of days is that you go straight back into Groundhog Day. All this stuff has been going on while you've been sitting in here talking to your mates. And you go back and there's a pile of paper to be dealt with, there's post-it notes everywhere, there's phone calls and there's email messages all piled up in your inbox. And this gets set aside as you dive straight back into solving the problems that have arisen since you've been away. My big challenge at that moment was I could go straight back into that business and try and fix a million dollar hole. Or I could take one more day of my life and try and work out what routines I was going to put in place in the business, what rhythm I was going to put in place in the business to make sure we never had another million dollar hole in my life. Succinct and to the point. Going through this process, finding our purpose, understanding our passion, influencing people and knowing where to find the hidden profit in the business, we managed to trade out of a million dollar hole and not go broke. And in fact, the business was 30% more profitable in the following year because I had the time to create strategy and make sure we're executing on it. Now, it's a bit of a long journey I've taken you on this morning, but it's an important one because half of the stuff I talked about, I bet we don't think about often enough. We're too busy focused on just getting the money in the till when we should be focused on the entirety of the platform of how we're gonna drive our business forward. Please. Walk out of this room, take those business cards, have those conversations, write that plan, find those 30 minutes and make a commitment to make a change with the fantastic information you are about to receive at this year's annual meeting. Thanks for sharing half an hour of your life with me. I'll see you in Speaker's Corner.